Hello and welcome to the Daily Royal. My name is Shelby and I have been a royal watcher for the past 10 years. In this podcast, I talk about the daily events of seven of the European monarchies. So I talk about Belgium, the UK, Denmark, the Netherlands, Norway, Spain, and Sweden. I upload Monday through Friday with occasional bonus episodes here and there. Today, we are going to be talking about all of the events from Thursday, April 29th of 2021. I just want to preface, today's probably going to be more of a fangirly episode, just because, well, I mean, come on. It's been, it's the 10th anniversary of me being interested in all of these people. Um, Pretty much before today, 10 years ago, I had no idea that other royal families really existed. Um, And so that's a big deal. But also, it's just a great day. So we are going to jump in. Um, We're going to go through this just like a normal day. Uh, When we get to the British royal family, yes, I'm going to fangirl. It's going to be fine. We'll get through it. (laughs) Um, So with that, let's go ahead now, and we're going to start with the Belgian royal family. Before we get too far into the day, I do want to also just say um, today's episode is probably going to be pretty short um, just because there weren't a ton of things that happened. Um, I have mentioned I'm starting this new job. I'm a little exhausted. Um, I'm recording really late. I'm not sure why. Like, it's only 830. It's not really that late in comparison to what it used to be. Um, but like, I'm already ready to go to bed at 8.30 PM, um, which it's way too early. I don't go to bed till like midnight, but I need to like turn my brain off a little bit. So I want to get through this quickly, but also, um, cover everything as fully as possible. So just a little heads up there. Um, So today in Belgium, there were a couple of different events. Um, So first, King Philippe held an audience with the Flemish Minister of Welfare, Health, Family, and Poverty Reduction in an audience. Um, So I've talked about this before, but Belgium has three, um, like, regional governments. Um, So the Wallonian government is French speaking. The Flemish government is the Dutch speaking. And um, then there's a German speaking community as well. So those three governments will have different representatives um, for each. So um, that was his event for the day. And then Queen Mathilde had a couple of different events. Um, So first she took part in a digital meeting to learn about a virtual show called Pizza Economy, which is like a one-man comedic show that is being shown in high schools um, to help teach high schoolers learn about um, different economic models in the world to um, give them more of a what's the word? Um, Like a fun or at least um, relatable experience of those models and not just learning them in a book because that doesn't work for everybody. Um, And there, if there are real world examples or like funny comedic, you're going to have an easier time relating to them. Um, So that was the first thing. And then she also held a meeting with representatives from an organization called Les uh, Les Mots de Tom. Um, Or (laughs) that's what, that's what I'm going to say because the whole thing was in a French accent. Um, But it translates literally to Tom's words. And this is an organization that focuses on anti-bullying. So on the um, child side, as well as helping parents whose children are experiencing bullying um, to help guide parents through that process. Because obviously bullying is a, a thing that affects 
um, in, a, in a parent's case, it affects their child very intensely um, or could. Um, and so to help parents navigate that feeling, um, this organization supports the parents, but also um, does anti-bullying initiatives and also like, here's what happens when you are being bullied and um, assisting in ways with that as well. So that is super important. I wish, I desperately wish um, that the Belgian royal fam- or the royal household, it's not the family, but the, the people who run like the household would do a little bit more sharing, like a lot more detailed readout of what the event is. Um, and maybe not always, I understand that, but like, in this specific situation, um, you know, I would love to know more about the organization. And I'm not, I do think they may be linked on Twitter to the organization. Let me, let me check that because if they did, like, that's helpful. Yeah, they didn't. So maybe, you know, the organization doesn't have a social media presence, but then, like link to their website or something so you get so I could have gone onto a deeper dive easier um because I don't know that's just helpful I guess um but anyway a big day full of events and all of those were unscheduled I mentioned this yesterday there were no more scheduled events for the Belgian Royals um on the calendar at least so the same applies to tomorrow. There's no scheduled events, but there very well could be. Um, but that does remind me there will not be an episode up um, on Saturday this week. So we are officially going back to Monday through Friday episodes um, because I now work <laughs> Monday through Friday, which is weird. It's been a very long time for me since I have not worked a weekend. Um, so I will always have Saturdays off. Um, unless I decide to pick up hours or something, but I will always be off on Saturday. So that will officially be like a day for me to have time to do everything that I would want to do. Um, which I'm so excited about. I can't even begin to tell you, but that is how this is going to go into May. We're going to still do Monday through Friday, um, for May and probably June and July. Um, we'll see. I always reevaluate like what things I want to change every month. And, um, I do that on the first, so that will be decided, but I do know, um, I can tell you for sure. We'll do Monday through Friday with potential pop-up episodes. I know there were a lot more episodes this month than normal because I did so many episodes that came up on a Saturday, um, or extra, but that's a pretty rare event. Um, so that is where we're at there, like I said. Um, so with that, we will see what the Belgian Royals are up to next week. Um, so let's go now to the British Royal Family. I don't think I have ever been so excited to talk about something. Mm, that's not true. There are some other things that have excited me this much, but this one for me and for so many royal watchers and people who are even just like somewhat fascinated by royals, this is like the day that started it all for a lot of us. Um, so April 29th, 2010. Um, so I'm going to talk about this part first because I cannot stop myself from fangirling much longer. Um, and then I'll talk about the other like daily events. So today is the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge's 10th wedding anniversary. Um, so they were married April 29th, 2010. Um, and to celebrate the day, they... I am so excited. Um, they released two pictures to go on the papers last night. Um, they were embargoed until like 10.30 p.m. 
in the UK. Um, so we had, by the, when I recorded last night, I had seen them as had probably most of the world, but I wanted to talk about it all today, um, in case there were any extra things. Um, and so these pictures were taken, they say this week, um, at Kensington Palace, which is where the couple live. Um, and they're adorable and it is just a Voil and Kate and like, they're very, <sighs> reminiscent of some of their engagement photos, but much more, um, they're outside versus inside. So they're more casual. Um, and I don't know, they just are a couple that have just kind of aged well and like look better than they did 10 years ago for their engagement photos. Um, I don't know. I loved these pictures. They were cute. They were very, it seemed like they were very them. Um, of course we don't know all the ins and outs of their personalities, but it did seem very, um, real and like who they are, or at least who they portray themselves to be, which I think are very similar to what they actually are like. Um, and so that was just really good. And then, and then today, there was a new video of them and the family that they have created. So their three children at their near their home in Norfolk, which is um, near the Sandringham estate. That's where they um, prefer to spend most of their time um, when the kids aren't in school. And, you know, especially over the past year, it gives them more outside freedom than being at Kensington Palace would do. Um, so they have a home there. And it just looked lovely. So this was shot in the fall, um, this video. During their time, it was around the same time as their their 2020 Christmas photo was um, taken. In fact, it was the same day because the kids are, everyone's in the exact same clothes. And it's just, I don't know, it's so nice. It was such a good video um, and it really focused on like, their element. So they've talked a lot about, uh, Will and Kate have about how they are the most themselves when they're outside and just, you know, being a family and, um, especially in Norfolk where they can do that. Um, and, and that's just what this was. I mean, they were just outside playing, being a mess. I mean, at one point Prince George had like dirt all over his jacket. Um, it just looked fun. And it was perfect. This whole thing was perfect. I wasn't sure what I really wanted. I wanted photos. I knew that much. Um, and I wanted the kids involved in some way, but I wasn't sure like what else I really wanted. Um, you know, with Crown Princess Victoria and Prince Daniel of Sweden, they did, they had celebrated their 10th anniversary last year. Um, and they did a large series of photos and I liked that. I really did. Um, but I think this one was kind of, it was different. Um, and I don't want to compare them because they're not, the, I mean, yes, they were both 10th wedding anniversaries. Um, but the, the Swedes are much more open, um, than the British Royals are known to be, but I definitely think like Will and Kate are a little bit of the exception to that. Like they are very open, they're very private, but they are, um, they do share a lot. And I just think that's really awesome. So I was very happy with these um, two releases. I kind of wish there was like some element of an event that like tied in, but we're in the middle of a pandemic. There can't really be. Um, so I understand, but I think that's like my only thing that I maybe would have wanted, but I don't know. I'm very happy with everything we got. So um, that is my fangirl moment. Also, I cannot believe I've been watching these people, all of them that I talk about for 10 years. Um, that's crazy. I was a, this is going, I've talked about my age. I don't, I genuinely don't care. I was finishing my freshman year of college. I had, I was in final exams. I had a psychology exam um, the same morning and I was pretty sure that I was already going to fail the class, but then I had been up since 445 and then I took the exam uh, and then I definitely failed. Um, 
It's the only class I've ever failed in my entire life, and it's not the wedding's fault. Believe me, that was just a rough class for me. But I remember going and taking that exam, and it was just... (laughs) It was so weird to, like, come from the excitement of, like, this day and then go take an exam to a class I knew I was more than likely going to fail unless I got, like, a hundred on the exam, really. So... You know, it was weird, but it was perfect. Um, And I don't know. And then it was just like one royal family after the other. And now here, here we are. What a, what a journey. (laughs) Um, So that was wonderful. But then there were some other things that happened today. Um, So today, Queen Elizabeth also received credentials from the new ambassadors to the court of St. James, which is um, the UK, um, from, uh, Mauritania and Slovenia. I feel like I just butchered those two country names. Um, but anyway, they did this in another virtual (laughs) ceremony where the new ambassadors are at Buckingham Palace and the queen is at Windsor Castle and they're using some video conferencing tool to present the credentials. It's my favorite. I love it. Um, so that was happening also today, and then I want to pull up the court circular because there were some pretty interesting things from Kensington Palace. Well, there was one interesting thing that I want to talk about a little bit, um, but now I have to find it. Oh, Sorry, sometimes I get distracted when I pull up the court circular by the, um, headlines on my Apple News page. And anyway, I just get distracted. So there was something cute. And I said, I said, all. um, okay, court, come on. Really? Why is this not working? There we go. Court circular, April 29th. It was only giving me the 25th and that was not right. Okay. Um, so... These are the two ambassadors from the Windsor Castle side from Queen Elizabeth. And then today at Kensington Palace, um, the Duke of Cambridge held a meeting for the Earthshot Prize. And then he also held a um, video conference with former ambassador Caroline Kennedy. So Caroline Kennedy is a U.S. politician. Um, she is the daughter of President John F. Kennedy, um, and she was the ambassador to Japan from the U.S. during President Obama's administration. Um, so I am trying to figure out why this meeting happened, um, because I think I've mentioned this now. I know I mentioned this yesterday, um, but I am... A political nerd as well. I love politics and um, I won't say that JFK, that John F. Kennedy is like a personal hero because I was not alive while he was president. Um, but he is of course a name that everyone in the U.S. knows. Um, everyone in the world really. And so I'm assuming this is all conjecture that um, Caroline Kennedy, because her father is the one who started the moonshot that Prince William is basing the earth shot off of. Um, I'm assuming that she's going to have something to do with earth shot. I don't know what it's not confirmed anywhere. I went on a crazy search to find this out. She's not on the council from what I can tell. Um, so I don't know. I have questions and I'm super fascinated um, because these are like my two great loves of the world, um, royalty and politics. I have other things that I like too, don't get me wrong, but these two things take up a lot of my, um, my brain. So super fascinated by this, Um, but that is what was going on 
in the court circular for the royals that I talk about and my fangirling moment. And for that, luckily for me, we get to skip a couple of royal families um, because they did not have events today. So in Denmark and in the Netherlands, there were no events. So we are going to jump now to the Norwegian royal family. In Norway, there were not a lot of events today, um, but I want to obviously still talk about the ones that there were because, well, they existed. Um, so today, it being Thursday, uh, King Harald, as well as Queen Sonia and Crown Prince Akun took part in a meeting with the foreign minister for Norway. So I have decided that I'm going to share my thoughts about what happens in these meetings. Um, so obviously we know because King Harald has a council of state meeting every week that he is very in uh, the know of what's happening in his government uh, or the government that's formed in his name. I don't mean that it's his and that he runs it um, literally <laughs> like he does, but he, this is very confusing. <laughs> Let me try again. It is his government because it's his country. He is the head of state. He does not have a formal role other than to know what's happening in the country. He is not a politician. He's not making political choices. He's not in charge of making the decisions. Okay. Much like any other constitutional monarch. However, the way I said that was very confusing. So my assumption is either the foreign minister is not present at the council of state, which I'm pretty sure he is. Um, but Foreign relations and foreign politics and all of that um, will take longer than a few minutes to present. So I think these are just a here's what's going on in the world brief before the Council of State the next day. So I don't know what's happening in Norway, international politics, like what they're in on or not. Obviously, this week we were let in a little bit because there was the virtual, um, like, foreign visit to California um, from Crown Prince Akun and also the foreign minister of Norway and some other um, officials were taking part in these conversations about green technology. So we obviously know that. Um, but then there's the, the, <laughs> the general world of knowledge is what's going on in India and what can be done there. Um, but also, you know, things that are very specific to Norway and Norway is foreign relations that I have no knowledge of because I'm not Norwegian um, and I don't know what the foreign policy projects are in Norway. I can barely tell you ours except for we're, you know, involved in the foreign world again. That's what ours is right now, like being part of global conversations. So that is um, my thoughts, my theories on this weekly meeting. Um, but then also today, Queen Sonia held an audience with representatives from the International Music Competition in, in her name. So the Queen Sonia International Music Competition, um, just to continue keeping herself informed on the day-to-day -day activities and also the large scale of the competition itself. So those were the two things going on in Norway today. Um, and now we are going to move on to the Swedish royal family or Spanish, not Swedish. Oh boy. Sometimes that happens. I was reading Swedish, but needed to say Spanish. Anyway, we are moving on now to the Spanish royal family. In Spain, there were a few events. We're going to start with the birthday, though, because this has happened to me where I have forgotten to talk about, like, 
I may have forgotten to talk about King Felipe's birthday because they don't release things. So in almost every other country that I talk about, they release new photos of the royals um, on their birthday. They did not because Spain doesn't do that. Um, They hardly ever take official photos, let alone share official photos. It's like Christmas is what you get per year. And now obviously you're seeing, we're seeing the girls more often because of, I don't know why, Spanish reasons. Um, But today Infanta Sofia is celebrating her 14th birthday. So I wanted to acknowledge that at the top of this segment because it's a big deal. Um, And I've definitely forgotten to talk about royals who don't get their new photo shared um, on their birthday, especially some of the younger ones. Um, So that's where we're at. Um, So that's where we're going to start. Now let's go on to the days of men's. Um, So today, this morning, King Felipe attended the announcement for the award from the foundation of the Princess of Girona or Princess of Girona Foundation. I said that like a Spaniard in English. Anyway... Um, so the Princess of Girona Foundation, um, for the scientific investigation category. So I have yet to watch this one, um, because it was on at like 4.30 in the morning and I slept in. Um, and also I'm starting a new job and I'm sleeping a little bit more than I used to. Um, but The order of events, from what I can tell from the pictures I've seen and, like, the little skimming that I have done is pretty similar to what we've seen. Um, Queen Letizia has attended all of these so far this year. Um, And I think there's maybe one or two more categories still. But um, it is... There are, um, like, some global problems that are being solved. Um, First, and... (laughs) Okay brainstormed they're not being solved sometimes they are but there um, are different challenges that the world are facing kind of where people are coming up with ideas teams of high schoolers or younger people um so the idea for the foundation for the uh, the princess of Girona foundation is to focus on youth and young people so I think everyone who wins this award is under 30 or 35 they're very young um professionals who have stood out in their community. Um, And then there's the actual, um, like, announcement ceremony where they discuss different things. Um, I'm not sure if there was one today that Felipe sat in on, but there's always a meeting of of the jury, essentially, to decide who wins. I think they do this last minute. Um, And then they make the announcement. And in pandemic times... Um, the person who wins will come on via like video conference and just briefly say thank you. So I, I'm not sure who the winner is, um, because I haven't looked and I talked about this with the last one, um, that Queen Letizia presided over. What's going to happen is I'm going to do a special episode on the Princess of Girona Awards, and it'll be for 2020 and 2021, is the idea, assuming that the award ceremony actually happens this time around. Um, I have no doubt that it will. It might be modified. Um, but because I do one for the Princess of Astorius Awards, or I did in 2020 and plan to do again in 2021, um, we... I will do one of those where I'll talk about the different winners and it'll be a standalone episode. Um, I also plan to do these for like the Nobel Prize, even though that's two royal families involved. I'll do that versus combining that into a regularly scheduled episode. Um, If King's Day didn't happen this week, I probably would have done a separate King's Day episode. Um, But just because it was this week, it just wasn't feasible. Um, but for different events like that, that are really intense kind of things, I want to give them a lot of time. So when we do the Princess of Girona Awards episode, I'll go into the details of the winners a little bit, but also like the whole event around. So typically the, uh, award ceremony is like it's one day and then there's a couple of events the next day similar to the princess of astorius awards so 
we'll do that and that's when I'll talk about the winners and such um just so you know and then also today so after all of that King Felipe also had an audience with the foreign minister of Tunisia who is on a working visit to Spain I know we had some foreign visits in March like state visits and uh, the Duke and Duchess of Cornwall or the Prince of Wales and Duchess of Cornwall went to Greece like I know we did that it still boggles my mind when foreign people are traveling like, like it, I live in the States, obviously, um, and our Secretary of State was kind of all over, and I'm just like, dude, COVID. Um, obviously, protective measures were taken, and I understand that, but, like, he was everywhere. Um, and it boggles my mind. And, like, I know foreign ministers and secretaries of state, which is what our foreign minister is called, um, like, they need to travel. I understand that. But, like... It's weird. And they did announce um, in the States the from the White House that uh, our president will be attending the G7 summit in the UK, um, which is expected. And then he'll also attend a NATO summit. Um, so, like, there is foreign travel coming up, and I know that. And we've seen some already, but it still boggles my mind. Um, so anyway, those were the few things happening in Spain today, um, and now we are going to go ahead and move on to the Swedish royal family to end this episode. was just one event in Sweden today I think I'm going to confirm that though um so today Queen Sylvia visit virtually visited a children's home in South Africa that is supported by her organization uh the World Childhood Foundation um so she had visited the the center before and uh virtually visited this time to check out on its progress and also just um you know, have that communication. And then also on the video call was Princess Madeline, who is the youngest daughter of King Carl Gustav and Queen Sylvia, um, youngest child. And she, she's not, she doesn't do a lot of activities. She doesn't live in Sweden, so she doesn't do a lot of activities with the Swedish royal family. She is still a mem- like a working member of the family, um, but not as much because she actually lives in the States. Um, so she and her family live here. And, um, especially because of that, like the pandemic protocol and all of that, she can't travel to Sweden. Um, so she has done a couple of different events over the past couple of days because I don't talk about her anyway. I don't ever mention them. Um, but when they're on video calls with the rest of the family, I do share all of that. Um, and so it was just kind of nice to see her doing this. She, um, has a big role in the Childhood Foundation. She sits on both boards for, um, for Sweden, but also for the U.S. There's a U.S. branch of the World Childhood Foundation, and she, um, worked in their office in New York and, like, now sits on the board and probably does some, uh, at-home work with them as well. So lots of different work that she does, um, but it's just not very often, um, because she's not in Sweden, so she can't visit Swedish places, um, but also she has a life, and her husband is, did not take a title or anything like that, and works for, like, a day-to-day life, um, and so she just lives a very normal life in Florida, and it's lovely, um, so that is what was going on today in all of our countries, my fangirl moment included. Um, and it was just a lovely day. It was a great like reminder day of where I was 10 years ago. And also like how, how much for me, obviously that has impacted, you know, my day to day life now. Um, so with all of that, 
Um, I'm going to end this episode and end the podcast for the week. I will talk to you all on Monday. And on Monday, we'll cover Friday through Sunday events. Um, And I will talk to you all then. But until then, please check out thedailyroyal.com, The Daily Royal on Instagram, and like and review this podcast. I'll talk to you all on Monday. Bye.